Does how you export your photos from Lightroom actually make a difference? Yes. Yes, it does. And today we are going to walk through all of the steps of Lightroom exporting and which settings you should use and for what. Will Simpson here, and welcome back to Exploring Photography. Great to see you again. If you are not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't already. I am on my way to 10,000 subs and I'd love to get there in the next couple of months. So your help is greatly appreciated. But today we're gonna go over the Lightroom export settings. And I am using the newest available version of Lightroom 11.3.1 as of today, uh, April 25th, I think it is. What is today? April 25th, yeah. Anyways, so let's get into it and uh, get into the export settings. So here's this photo that I have just finished editing and here's the before and here is the after. I edited this with my golden touch preset from my Exploring Photography 2020 preset pack, which is available on my website. So let's go ahead and right click on the image, go to export and export. Now you will notice there are a ton of options. Now we're just going to be messing with this section here, all of these. The first one is simple, export location. Where are you saving the file? I always do a specific folder because my organization process, how I do it is let's say I take pictures on May 1st. I will have a May 1st raw, May 1st, 2022 raw folder. That will be all the raws. Then as I edit those photos, I will have a May 1st, 2022 edit folder. That way they link up and I know where all those raws are at all times. It's my best way that I organize personally. So everyone is different though. So in this case, I'm saving this into YouTube videos, Lightroom export tips, because that's the video we're in the process of making. And you can put it into a subfolder, which if you select this, it will create a folder inside that folder to put the file in. I never do that. Uh, add this to catalog, I don't mess with that, and then existing files. This simply says if there is a current file type of that name, what do you wanna do with the second one? And it'll automatically choose a new name, override it without warning or skip it. Basically it gives you the same options. If you put ask what to do, it gives you those three options and then you can choose. I always just put ask what to do. Uh, all right, now once you have the folder picked, let's go into file naming. So I generally just leave this alone. The file name in this case is underscore Y2A3893 dot JPEG. Now the raw file is dot raw or CR3 or ARW or DNG, whatever your camera is. I generally just leave it as the file name because if I ever wanna find the raw image, if I rename it, then I don't can't find that original raw image easily. This way I can simply just say, oh, it's 3893. Go look in the raw folder for that date, find 3893, there's the raw file. It just makes it super simple unless there's a specific reason I need to rename it. So if I wanna rename it, you just click this and rename it to, um, rename file, whatever. Anyways, I just leave it as the file name. It just seems easiest for me. Uh, video, I'm not sure what this honestly is because you can't, well, at least I haven't been able to import videos into Lightroom. Not that I've actually tried on purpose, but sometimes I try and import a bunch of files and there's, it happens to be a video mixed in somehow and it won't let me import. So I'm, I don't know. If you know what this, this section is, comment below, let me know. <laughs> All right, the next thing is the file settings. All right, so this is where you can choose JPEG, RAW, PNG, this, that, and the other thing. You can set the quality, you can limit the file size. And this is where I make most of the adjustments that are applicable to the images. So for example, the first thing is image format. JPEG, Photoshop file, Photoshop file, PNG, DNG, original. So nine times out of 10, I'm using JPEG. However, if you wanna take your photo and you have all those edits and you wanna save that preset on your phone in Lightroom Mobile, save it as a DNG. This is a raw file. This will save those edits. And then when you import it on your phone into Lightroom Mobile, it will show those edits and then you can save the preset. So that is the way to get your presets onto your phone if you're not using Lightroom uh, CC, if you're using Lightroom Classic, which is what I'm using here. And all of this stuff here, I just leave it as default. So the next thing, once you've cho chosen JPEG, is this is your color space. I use this sRGB, I leave it standard. It's what most of the industry uses. 
when you're doing prints or anything like that, sRGB is the most common red color space. So I just leave it at that. So the next thing is quality, but we're actually gonna go to limit file size first because there's a, quite a bit of information on the quality, which I'm gonna go over in a second, which is what the thumbnail was referencing to. So if you click limit file size, the quality option goes away because what you're doing is you're telling Lightroom to make the file no bigger than this amount. Now, the K stands for kilobyte. There are a thousand kilobytes in a megabyte. So when I put here 3000 kilobytes, I'm trying to limit that file size to three megabytes. Generally, I do this with client photos because they don't really need 30 megabyte files. Anything between two and seven, 10 is plenty big for what they're gonna do with it. And if they want something bigger um, or they want to print something, they can just ask me for a bigger size. But nine times out of 10, a two megabyte file is plenty to print eight by 10 or even 24 by 36, it's not gonna be a problem. So I generally use that for clients. Now, if I'm doing my prints, like my fine art landscapes, I'm going to not limit the file size and I'm gonna have 100% quality. Now here is where things change. Here's where things can get a little different. If from 10% all the way up to 100%, let's look at these differences. Here is 10% quality. Notice all of these bands at the top in the sky. Now you might think, well, that's because you push the color too much. That's because you're creating banding. Well, actually, no, that's because the file size is so small, the quality is so bad that it's not able to register the color and all of that. So it is creating the banding. So here's 20%. Now, if you look at the difference, 10%, 20%. Little bit less banding, but still really, really terrible. 30%, again, here's 20%, 30%. A little bit less, it's starting to smooth out a little. Go to 40%. 40%, you still see a lot where the sun, sun is down here, but a lot less. Let's go to 50%. And 50% is pretty clean, but it looks like there is still a little around the sun. Here's 60%, and that looks good. Actually, it looks like there's more banding on 60% than there is 50%. See all this here, all that banding? 50%. 60%. Yeah, there's actually more banding in 60% than there is 50%. That's weird. So here's 70%. And 70% looks pretty good. Let's go to 80%. 80% looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't see really any difference between 70 and 80%. Let's go to 90%. And at this point, you're pretty good. And then 100%. Okay, so you can see the difference in quality. At 70%, you're pretty much, you have a clean image. But if you are trying to say post on Instagram and you do 30%, 30% looks like that and you get all this banding. So the photo is gonna look shitty on Instagram. So when you're uploading on Instagram, you wanna find the smallest quality that you can export it as, but still the highest quality image. So for Instagram, 70% is just fine. You're gonna get a great image. I was posting some photos at one point at like 50% and 40% and they were getting these banding things and that's when I discovered this. So I would stick with 70% for any kind of social media posting, but if you're going to print for a client or you're gonna print for a fine art print, 100% always stay at the top. Don't, don't try and skip there, just stay at the top. So those are the differences between the qualities, 10% all the way up to 100%. It just, it makes a difference and that might be why you're seeing some degradation on your photos if you're lowering the quality too much. So once you've set your qualities here, we're gonna go into image sizing. Now this one here, you can resize to fit. Honestly, if you're cropping it four by five or whatever, you're gonna do all of this resizing in actual Lightroom editing in your crop tool. So I wouldn't worry too much about this. But again, for fine art prints and for client photos, I'm doing 300 pixels per inch. Um, DPI, basically your resolution. I'm gonna do 300, 300. Uh, for Instagram, I'm just gonna leave it at 240. It is no need to go bigger than that. It doesn't matter because it's already compressed anyways. There's no need to stretch it out even more. It's just not necessary. Uh, output sharpening, I never touch it because I always do all of my sharpening in my edits. Metadata, um, that is totally up to you. I leave the metadata in my photos because then it keeps the copyright, it keeps the data. Um, it's, it's personal preference, totally up to you. Next is watermarking. Click that, and this is where you turn on your watermark, not where you set it up. So to turn on your watermark, click that, and then you can choose your default watermarks. You can edit them. 
So it allows you to go into the editing watermark area, but this is not actually where you edit them. Let's get out of this really quick and I'll show you. You go up to Lightroom Classic, you go to Edit Watermarks, and this is where you edit your watermarks, generally. Um, let's go back into the ex export screen. So, uh, down at Watermark, if you select your watermark and turn it on and then export your image with a watermark, this will remain checked. So make sure that when you go to export images, if you don't want the watermark on again, you have to unselect this. So once checked and exported, it stays checked. Once unchecked and exported, it stays unchecked. Just something to remember. And finally, post-processing. So after exporting, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna open it in Finder, which is on Mac, it's just the where the file is located on the computer? Do you wanna open it in Photoshop, Luminar, so on and so forth? Literally, I've never used this. I always have it on Do Nothing. So once you've done all that, you press export. And there you go. That is a quick walkthrough of all of your export settings and what I choose to export my Lightroom files. And that's all there is to it. So if you wanna get some presets, check out my website. Uh, if you have any questions on this, let me know in the comments. Go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and now YouTube recommends that you watch this video here next. So go check out that one and I'll see you guys next week. I hope this was helpful. Always good to have you. See you later.